War obliterated the unremarkable life Captain Douglas Aziz says he was living. Before ISIL, I was just an ordinary man with a normal job. Now, it's like I was reborn. Being a fighter gave me significance and added magnitude to my character. <clears throat> Aziz used to repair air conditioners to support his wife and three daughters. But when the Christian family was driven from their home by ISIL, he became one of the first recruits of Dwak Nausha. The Christian forces were established two years ago after ISIL swept through and took control of their towns. They had no formal training and they started with nothing, relying primarily on donations. A year ago, they formed an alliance with the Kurds and now fight alongside the Peshmerga. The Kurds and the Christians share a history of persecution in Iraq. The Kurds say this partnership is also strategic. They view Christian villages as an extension of their semi-autonomous region. Although these lands are predominantly Christian territory, they are still considered a minority. Therefore, we joined forces with them, and ever since, we shed blood, sweat, and tears to retake their land. The Dwek Nausha is estimated to number just hundreds of fighters. While on the front lines, the fate of their displaced families continues to weigh on them. They were getting a small salary from a Christian political party, but they haven't been paid in four months. Mayada Abdul Ghani and several families have called this abandoned school home for a year and a half. Her nephew is in the Dwak Nausha. It gives us happiness to see sons and fathers in arms fighting together in order to retake our lands and protect our Christian community. But that pride has limits. She says this land is not worth shedding her three sons' blood. Captain Aziz and these fighters view it differently. They aren't just fighting to go home. They say they're fighting for the day when Christians have a semi-autonomous region in Iraq. Natasha Ganem, Al Jazeera, north of Mosul, Iraq.